Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss another derivatives application and look at chemistry and the rate of reaction. And I'm going to show how it can be defined using a derivative. Basically, a chemical reaction results in the formation of one or more substances called products from one or more starting materials called reactants. For instance, the equation for water we have two. Uh, hydrogen molecules, or basically this, this equation right here, 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O, indicates that two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen form two molecules of water right here. And the reactants are on the left side, so those are these right here, and the product is on the right side, which is water right here. And, and this, these numbers indicate the molecules or moles. I'll show that in a bit. But before uh, I get to uh, defining the rate of reaction, let's just consider a simple reaction like this. A plus B makes C. Ray and B are the reactants, and C is the product. Basically, the concentration of A is the number of moles per liter and is denoted by uh, just A enclosed with brackets right here. And uh, this mole right here is just equal to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules. And it's a really useful constant. I'm not going to go over definition right now, so, uh, but I might do that in a later video. Uh, basically, this is, this is called Avogadro's constant right here, the 6.022, etc. And this mole is just a way of scaling up. So when we're working with, we're really small, uh, yeah, working with molecules that have basically tons of molecules in them, etc., or, or any, any any sort of matter, everything has a lot of atoms and molecules. So instead of working with that, we'll just work with moles, which scales it up. So instead of working with this giant number, we work with one. And these, you could call them uh, moles right here. So two moles of hydrogen plus one mole of oxygen equals two moles of uh, water. Now, uh, the concentration during a reaction uh, varies right here. So yeah, so it, it, it could start off slow and end fast, or it would start fast and end slow. So basically, uh, the concentrations of A, B, and C are all functions of time and change depending on whatever their rate of reaction is. And basically, if we were to get the average rate of reaction of a product C, for example, over a time interval T, which is basically between T1 and T2, then the rate of reaction is just equal to basically delta uh, concentration of C. So the, the difference of concentration, uh, and this is over delta T from the time interval, and this just equals to concentration of C at T2 minus, yeah, minus the concentration uh, of the product at T1. And then this is all divided by T2 minus T1. And I just want to put this in bracket first. This is the average we're looking here. So this is average between the two right here. But the thing is, this average could be very different. Yeah, this average could be uh, yeah, not indicative of, of the actual rate of reaction at any time T, because there could be a huge variation of the rate of reaction. So, yeah, so chemists are more interested in the instantaneous rate of reaction or the rate of reaction at any time t, which is obtained by taking the limit of the average rate of reaction as the time interval delta t approaches zero right here. In other words, the rate of reaction is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta concentration of C right here, the average rate of reaction, delta T. And this is just a definition of derivative. So we can just write it as D uh, delta, uh, D times the concentration of C or uh, divided by DT, or D, DC over DT, which is just a derivative. And since the concentration of the product is increasing, uh, meaning, as you're as you're producing product, you're you're obviously produ you're, you're just the concentration is going to be increased because you're producing more and more product, and thus the d c over d t or the rate of the reaction. This one is positive right here, so it equals the positive number because it's increasing because you're producing the product as the reaction is taking place. But in in the case of the reactants, they are decreasing in concentration. Uh, and thus the makes the rate of reactions of A and B uh, positive. And basically to make, if you want to make the reaction of A and B positive numbers, 
we add a negative number right here because it, we're decreasing in in our uh, reactants right here. So as you decrease this one, this, this one decreases at the same rate because it's the only way that A is going to be decreasing is if it's reacting with B or the same amount of molecules or moles and then it's going to be producing the same amount of molecules or moles of C so the reaction rates be the same uh, for all, all three of them. And uh, basically, uh, and also it is clear from the equation that both A and B decrease at the same rate as C increase. Thus the rate of the reaction is the same or you could write it in the same and this would be written as uh, this one right here, D, or or basically rate of reaction equals to D, or the derivative of the concentration of C with time, uh, equals to now negative D A over D T, this is an A, equals to negative D B D T. And, uh, and, and like I stated before, you're decreasing in A, so this is going to be a negative number, and this is going to be a negative number, but then we put the negative just so the rate of reaction is positive, and we can put this equal sign. And yes, that's just uh, what it is, so two negatives make a positive. But in general, for a reaction in the form where we have these uh, constants right here, this A, B, C, and D, and uh, if these are basically yeah, the number of moles or molecules uh, of each of these uh, elements, or each of these molecules, or whatever those are. Then the base of the rate of reaction in this case, I'm not going to go over why this is, but I might do it in a later video. It's going to be similar to what I just stated above, but now we have to divide by whatever this constant or the number of moles is. So, for example, the rate of uh, the concentration, yeah, the, the derivative of the concentration of A, we have to divide it by, well, negative 1, 1 divided by A, uh, small a right here. Same for the B, and then this, then the, these are the products, so they're always positive, so we don't put a negative in there. And these ones are decreasing, so we put the negative there. So we just have to divide by whatever number is in front, and I might do this, uh, I might go over a video of why this is so in a later video, but uh, not right now. So anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this example or this application, just to illustrate how the derivative can be used in chemistry. And like in my early videos in physics and uh, basically a lot of other stuff like uh, electric currents and etc. Well, anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this video. And remember, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solutions.